Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about the literal oriented instructions. Earlier, um, in earlier videos, we have talked about um, byte oriented, which allowed us to uh, manipulate um, um, manipulate information in different bytes, quantities already in the memory, moving them around, adding them, subtracting them, multiplying them, doing all of those kinds of stuff. And what we're doing, we, and then we went to the bed oriented, which allowed us, for the, this bed oriented instruction allowed us to, um, I should have spelled it out, bed oriented instruction allowed us to manipulate a single bit that already is in the memory. The literals, these, these, these type of instructions allow us to take a constant and manipulate the stuff that is in memory with the constant. So this is really the only way we can integrate a given constant, like an integer 15, 20, 30, into operation using assembly code. So these instructions are very useful when you want to bring a constant into your equation. And, and they're pretty much set up all the same way. The opcode op is opcode with the machine code value, which says what instruction is uh, being manipulated is typically, typically except for one exception, typically is gonna be the most significant by the most significant 8-bit. Indicate, for example, for this one, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1 indicates you wanna do an AND. And if you want to do exclusive or it would be 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. And then this 8 bit, which are represented by K, K representing the constant is a value. So for example, if the number you want to work with is 25 hex, then the value for this would be, for 2 would be 0, 0, 1, 0, for 5 would be 0, 1, 0, 1. So these would be the values you put in K. Okay. Now, one of the other things is this is so straightforward um, and um, there, are, there aren't that many um, um, literal oriented instructions. I would like to take this opportunity and take a little bit of a tour of how we would um, take, uh, um, if we wanted to get more detail about an instruction, where would we go? Uh, one of the things I wanted to mention, this particular instruction is called an LFSR instruction is for indirect addressing. And we're gonna leave this one until much, much later in the COM6, uh, chapter six uh, um, con uh, the presentations. That's where we really get into what an indirect addressing is and how, how you deal with it. So let's go, for example, let's say, let's say you, you wanted to figure out uh, what uh, X, this X or LW is all about. It says it's an exclusive or literal with W, but you want to learn more about it. You want to get all the details that goes with this. Where do you go to get that information? As we mentioned before, the watch where you go is you're going to visit um, the you're going to visit the um, engrcs.com and while you're there um, we have all the data sheet for all the components listed there uh, so so we're going to go over there and take a look at that um, so when we are there we're going to click on the component specification and all the components that the previous videos are here as well but let's go ahead and click on the full data sheet for the microchip and it pops up and I really like to leave it at a PDF because all I have to do is kind of um, do a um, search simply saying control F and I say I really want to know X or LW uh, X or literal with the W register and I really want to know what that does now if I start from here and I'll do that just to show you if I start here, what's going to happen if I start to do this, it's going to walk me through every occur. Oh, uh, that was a little faster than I expected. Uh, so uh, typically walks you through a lot of stuff. So sometimes it's easier if you just jump all the way down to where 
um, all the instruction sets out of it, chapter 20 and start searching right there. But in this particular case, it looked like they didn't have a lot of examples of XOR um, literal W, so it just jumped right there. That's great. So we are there and let's go ahead and kind of maximize this a little bit so you can kind of take a look at it. Let's get rid of some of these extra windows. And I don't know where they went. So as you can see, we have all the information we need here. It is telling us is an exclusive OR. It's telling us that the constant can only be between 0 and 255. That kind of makes sense because we only have 8 bit to work on. And it, this one quickly tells you what the instruction will do. It will take whatever is in W register. It's going to exclusive OR it with whatever the constant is and put the result in W register. Only two status bits get affected. Either it's a negative, N gets affected, Z, um, Z gets affected. You might wonder what an N is. N is basically, uh, the assumption is that negative numbers are represented as two as complements. So if the most significant bit is one, it's going to call it the negative number, uh, which may not be what you're intending it to be. But Z is pretty simple. That's a zero. So if it's everything ends up being zero, the Z bit would be set. Okay, um, also tells you how long this instruction is physical uh, from a number of bits it needs. It's one word, which is two byte or 16 uh, bits. How, much, how long does it take is uh, one cycle. And remember, this is instruction cycle, not clock cycle. It actually takes four clock cycle. Each of these queues are one clock cycle. So like every, most of the other instruction, you do got to take a system clock to decode it, take a system clock to read the constant, take a system clock to process it, and take a system clock to write it out. And then, and then so instruction cycle is four system clocks. Whatever your system clock is, is going to be four times as long. And then it even gives you a little bit of an example of what's happening here is saying, I got an exclusive or AF is the constant I'm putting in there before instruction W register is that. So what is going to be, so you take B5, you exclusive or it with AF, and the result is, um, is um, uh, 1A that is put in here, okay? So let's go back now that we, so that for every instruction in this thing, you can use a control F and search for that instruction, find the detailed information. And I highly recommend you do that if it's an instruction you've never used before, because not all of these instructions do what they sound like they should be doing. And for example, you, you may want to know some of the default that is there and things like that. This one was particularly straightforward. Just looking at it, you know what it generally it does. Okay, let's go ahead and close this out. And uh, sure, close all tabs. And then what we're going to do, we're going to go back to our, th our things. That, and exclusive words are kind of, sometimes they're rare use, but when you need them, they're pretty darn useful to have. Let's, let's take a moment and um, take a look at, um, so take a look at the exclusive word in a little more detail. Let's say, let's say uh, someone tells you that uh, W register is set to, I don't know, well, might as well use uh, 35. We use 25, so we're going to use 35. And then we have an exclusive or someone gives us an XOR W. Um, and they, then they say, okay, XOR W with 0x. Um, let's do it with itself. That's kind of interesting. So uh, what, what does that mean? That means take whatever is in W register and exclusive with or with 35 and then put the result back in W register. So if they, if the first question is, what will be in W register after execution of exclusive or, you'll say, well, that's easy. I know W register has 35 X in it, so that's zero, zero, one, one, right? That's a three and a five, which is zero, one, zero, one. And the literal, the K that is given to me is also 35, the same number. And we know the definition of exclusive or <coughs> is that when I exclusive order a bet with another bet, 
If they are the same, I get a zero. If it's a, <clears throat> if it's a, if it's a um, different, if they are different, then I get a one. In this particular case, say I'm ending it with exactly the same thing. So one and one exclusive word with one, they're the same. So zero, zero with zero, 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 zero. Oh, that's interesting. So if I exclusive or a number by itself, I'm going to get a zero, zero. Just a couple other. These are useful. So, so how, is, how are they useful? Well, if I want to know if in W register, what if my number I'm thinking of is in the W register, uh, exclusive or M. If the answer comes back zero, you know it's exactly the same number. If not, then it's a different number. Now let me let me put one more in there. What happens if if I were to take the same W register, but this time I did an exclusive or LW with zero X F F? What's going to happen then? In this particular case, if I've got my 35 still in the W register, let's say I have the W register still set at 35 and I do this execution. Now see what happens if I put a 1, 1, 1, 1 and 1, 1, 1, 1 in here. Notice what happens. Wherever the original number 35 was a 1, it's going to go to 0. And wherever it was 0, I get a 1. Do you see that? And that's pretty interesting. So if I wanted to do that toggle, they call this toggle. If I want every zero to go to a one, every one to go to a zero or toggle every bit, then the easiest way is to exclusive or it with FF. Now, one last thing before we go off, the question, what's the machine code for this one? That's typically we're going to need to know this for at least this uh, video um, and discussion of the literal instruction just to make sure. So what's the machine code for this thing? So we know it's an exclusive OR, so we're going to go up here and see that the op code is 0001010. So we just write the op code 00001010. That is the op code. Now the question is, what do I put the rest? The rest is the constant we are using, and we know the constant we are using is F, so it's going to be 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. So this becomes the K. So this is a binary representation of machine code. For human readable, we usually write the machine codes in X when we are communicating amongst humans. So this would be 0, A, F, F, and that's the machine code. So that brings us to the end of literal and how you use them and a little bit of a detour in going and remembering how to search the data sheet to figure out whatever instruction is it that you're trying to figure out how it does it. And the caution again is if you haven't used the instruction before, it's always good to go read the full description of the instruction just to make sure you're not misunderstanding something. That brings us to the end of this, this video.